them gorgeous and beautiful, beautiful gamers. Welcome back to Role Playing Games. This is Mario Connor in the internet. But like, discuss about RPGs, like the content, like the videos, super appreciate it. Subscribe to the channel. No one sold you today. You're a gorgeous and beautiful person. <laughs> you are a gorgeous and beautiful person. In today's video, I'm going to show you how potion making and herbology works in this game and why is it so very, very overpowered. Not that. This is a very, very particular game, but if you're not trying to tackle on the highest difficulty of the, of the game, the enemies do tend to be more intelligent, faster, so on and so forth. And uh, yeah, I do believe that this turns the game into a joke. It trivializes the combat. But uh, first, the very first thing that you are going to need to do is continue through the main storyline for you to be able to unlock the room of requirements. In the room, once you have the room of requirements, what this does is that this basically gives you your, your alchemy room. The alchemy room where you are going to be able to grow your plants. And with those plants, you will get regions to brew potions. Now, before you actually start to do that, you will for free get uh, this let me see for free you will get the small scientific potion station the small scientific potion station is going to allow you to brew a single potion at any given time we'll talk about that later and then you're also going to get on the herbology side you're going to get the pot table with a small pot. This is where it gets interesting. You're also going to be needing moonstones. Though the moonstones, you, you get them from the world. Those little blue stones that you see and that you use Accio to get them close to you. Be sure to be grabbing them. And uh, I, I will try to have footage for you to show you which ones are the ones that you need. But that being said, you're going to need two things if you want to be proficient on potion making. And it's going to cost you money. <laughs> it really is going to be quite expensive. So you're going to, to be able to be proficient. You are going to have to travel to Hawksmith. And in Hawksmith, you're going to go over to this place. To the Tomes and Scrolls. In here, you can purchase scrolls for you to be able to make more complex herbology stations. You're also going to need seeds for your plants. You will get them in the magic nip. And also, you will get them on the dogweed and death cap. So basically, you have to purchase every scroll from... Well, every plant from here, every plant from here, and the biggest stations that you can afford from this guy, like I said, are going to be very expensive, very, very expensive, but we need them if we want to be efficient. So once we have purchased all of that, how does it work? Well, basically you have three different kind of stations. You have the small ones, which are these ones. This is the most expensive one. This station will allow you to grow five plants at the same at the same time. As you can see, I have the this five station for herbology to grow my mandrakes. We'll talk about mandrakes later. In here, I have the rest of the stuff that I grow. There are ingredients for potions. In here, I also like to grow my mallow sweet leaves. These ones are the ones that you use to be able to complete Merlin's puzzles. So very important indeed. In here, this is a three medium herbology station. Three slot medium herbology station. In this one, I grow my Chinese champion cabbages. And in here, I grow more materials, regions, which are the shrivel, shrivel thick, 
<laughs> Those things. Collect them. That's where we get them. The Trivial Fake Fruits. Those are regions for potion making. In here, I grow my flux with stems. And I should also like to have... I do not have moonstone enough right now. But I would like to have two more of the big ones. Like I said, this is a big one. That is important because you have different kind of seeds. Your seeds, once you have purchased them from Magic Nip and Dogwick and Dead Cap, you are never going to run out of them. You can just place them on the stations and that's it. Let me show you how. So for example, here, this one. Let's collect this thing. Let's collect this thing. Let's collect this, this thing. So if we inspect this one and we empty the pot, you will see that I have all of the possible seeds that I can have. We can have Dittany, we can have Mallow Sweets, we can have Mandrix, Nutgrasses, Chinese Chomping Cabbages, Shrivel Figs, Fluxweed, and Venomous Tentacula. These are all of the kind of seeds that you will be able to have. And like I said, you can purchase all of these seeds in the Magic Nip, as well as Dogwig and Dead Cap. So these ones are only, only going to be able to be grown at the small tables because as you can see this is a small size plant. These ones are medium sized plants. They need to be grown in medium sized tables. And these ones, those are large plants and they need to be grown under la large tables. It is very important for you to have as many slots as possible because you are going to be using them for ocean brewing as well as in combat. So, for example, these are the cabbages. As you can see, you can access them by LB, and here I have them. This basically summons a nearby cabbage that deals physical damage to the enemies on the battlefield. You can have three of them at the same given time. This one is a Benam Venomous Tentacula. This one deals poison distance damage, range damage to the enemy. You can have two of them on the battlefield at the same time. And these are the Mandrakes. The Mandrakes will stun your opponents and uh, basically allow these guys to do their, their job. So these will, these will be grown at a small tables. These ones will be grown at a medium table and these ones will be grown at a large table. So for example, in a large table, I want to be growing my flux widths, my flux widths in here, as you can see. And I would like to have another big table to grow the venomous tentacula in here. There's also a quest for you to be able to have that one. But uh, that is a completely different matter for a completely different video. Now, once you have the regions, not all of the regions for the potions will you get them from growing plants in here. So, you're also going to get regions from exploring out in the world and you cannot grow them. Like for example, I have my Dittany leaves in here, that, that's for creating a life potion. And my Dittany leaves, I actually am growing those ones right uh, here, I believe. And there you go, that's Dittany. That's what I need for the potion. You also need for Hork Lump Juice, which comes from the mushrooms that you will see lying around exploring the world. And basically, this is the second part. You do want to have a big potion station because it's really too much of a hassle to have different potion stations. And they are not instantly made, so you do, this just gives you more commodity, you do not need to do this, you do not need to purchase, this one is not as important as the plants. The plants are very important if you want to keep your stocks at all times. But uh, for example, this just gives you commodity. Let's say for example that I want to brew a focus potion. This takes one minute. Let's brew this one on this one, right here. And right here you see so now they are going to be brewing in here and they are going to be ready and that was a lot more faster if I had a different tea 
po uh, potion station in here I could also speed up the process of brewing potions Whereas if I only had one station potion in different places I would have to be switching from one to another It's too much of a hassle Now why did I tell you that you need to have the biggest station possible at least for when it comes to growing plants you are going to be doing a lot of combat and that a lot of combat is going to drain your cabbages your tentaculas your potions you need to be restocking it doesn't really take that long it really for like the most complex ones it takes like 10 minutes and at the end of the day if you are already maxed out like you see me right here this is the maximum that i am able to carry at the moment you can just come back and grab them and collect them while you do your exploration and so on and so forth the thing is that uh, when we go to create and you only have the basic station for herbology you will see right here that we have a potting table budget so if you would, for example, just have the small potting tables or the medium pot potting tables, but just the this one, this is for growing a single plant. Uh, this one I just have the this one. This is for growing a single plant. So if you are able just to grow a single plant, is not going to be enough for you to be able to grow all of the different regions plants that you need to use in combat at the end of the day i also use my mandrix quite a lot in combat and if i weren't uh, i weren't able to grow all of this at the same time i wouldn't be able to spam spam them in combat and be and come back for more every time that i need them so it is very important that you actually do purchase the biggest ones and that being said the potions that i would mostly advise for you to to have at all times is the druid's potion which enhances your defense you can get uh this one you can craft it by getting regions from the world this is not for from growing them in here this one requires this is very important as well this this basically allows you to spam uh your spells which is very very powerful you need leech juice for this ones and spider fangs as well you get the fangs by fighting spiders and leech juices you will get them close to every single water area for example a lake or a river there is always going to be leeches around that for this one you're going to need uh, I, mean, I mean this one the, the one that gives you damage this one allows you to spam your uh, spells so they do not get a cooldown you need uh, lace wing flies you will get them from the bushes around the world flux weed we are growing that one right here and dark uh, dark bug tongues <laughs> tongues you will get them from the large frog like enemies that are always regularly on swamps so you do have to be farming for, for from those this one launches a storm on the battlefield and it's very efficient it deals a whole lot of damage you do need the leech juices which i told you were to get uh stench of the dead i do believe that you get that from killing undead the shrivel fig fruits we grow them in here and this one i do not believe to be that important because at the end of the day it really having like uh the talent tree for Invincibility is a whole lot more efficient and gives you a whole lot more assets So I really don't use do not use that one that much But for example, like I said in combat you can have three of this bad boys And they are going to be very very damaging. You can also have two of this bad boys And basically you can do that and finally use this thing and uh, that is going to stun the enemies it's not going to stun your plants and they are basically going to kill everything and that is very very broken on top of that if you have your plants killing everything around you and you also use like for example a maxima potion a focus potion and a durus potion 
you basically become god. I have been using this thing to go to <laughs> over leveled areas in the game and I have just been melting everything. Uh, let me prove it to you right now. Let's go to a fight on, our, on a over leveled area. So right now I'm in this place. This is a over leveled area. As you can see, this is basically the end game area of the game. Um, if we zoom out, you will see that this is the enemy level uh, 30 to 40. Right now, I am level 20. So, I should have quite a lot of problems if I wanted to, to fight them. So, right now, I am going to use this. And then I am going to find some enemies that are way over leveled. <laughs> they should melt me. But uh, they shouldn't. For example, if I um, it isn't. What have you done? Oh, never mind, and I basically didn't have to do anything because they mailed them. <laughs> Oh god, this is so broken, and, and, and I feel so bad about it. So basically, you can use this thing to go to higher level areas and start killing enemies, start killing uh, stuff, start doing high level quests. And uh, I didn't even use my potions. <laughs> I didn't even use my potions. But for example, if I am fighting against a boss, I would just throw my little things out there in the battlefield and then I would just uh, use my potions, my Edurus potion, Maxima potion and you know what, as a matter of fact, let me showcase you that one as well. That guy should also melt me real bad. So let's let's drink an Edurus potion, a Maxima potion and a Spam potion. And there we go. <laughs> so yeah, potions are very, very, very overpowered. They are expensive, and for you to be able to maintain them, it's going to cost you both time, effort, and money. But trust me, it is worth it. No one has told you today you're a gorgeous and beautiful person, you're indeed a gorgeous and beautiful person. Subscribe to the channel, like the content if you are, uh, if you found the information <laughs> useful. Like the video and comments as well, it really helps me like you have no idea. And have a beautiful, beautiful day. You got them gorgeous and beautiful person. Goodbye.